What is going on college football fans? Today I have for you guys a conference realignment scenario that I came up with that could save college football. As we all know, conference realignment is a hot topic right now and there is a ton of rumors going around about the Big Ten and the SEC just becoming two power super conferences and leaving everybody else out to die. So I think I came up with a scenario that could be semi-realistic, that could save college football and instead of the power five we are now going to have the super four conferences so i'm ready to share it with you guys and break it all down i just want to say subscribe if you guys are new super close to 5,000 subscribers just a thousand away hit that like button if you guys enjoy and yeah guys let's get it started all right we're going to start it off by breaking down each of the four conferences no more power five conferences which had 69 total teams we are now in the super four conferences which have a total of 72 teams 18 teams per conference, which each have two divisions of nine teams each. Starting here in the SEC, we have the SEC West and the SEC East, which each have nine, nine teams in them. And in each season, you will play six same division games. That means you will get to play each team in your division two of every three years. So that is pretty good. You get to see everybody in your division very, very often. And then for the other division, so if you're Oklahoma playing in the SEC West, you will play Georgia in the SEC East once every three years. So you will get to play everybody in your conference at least once every three years. I think that that's pretty good and kind of better than the system they have now uh, with the divisions here. So now you will also play your other three games as your three non-con games. So that makes sense. So let's break down who is in the new SEC conference. So we have in the SEC West, we have Oklahoma, which are joining here next season. Oklahoma State actually being one of the other teams that joined this conference because after Oklahoma and Texas joined the SEC, they had 16 teams. So we had to have, add two more. One of those teams being Oklahoma State. I feel like they fit the SEC mold. Mike Gundy is definitely, he screams, you know southeastern conference like uh and then you get bedlam added to that as well i i feel like that makes sense and i also added houston down there from the big 12 as well that kind of balances it out a little bit i tried to keep a little bit of parity where i could but still kind of make it semi-realistic houston is east texas so we added them here to the sec so we have oklahoma oklahoma state you get bedlam you also get oklahoma texas they're joining Texas A&M, Houston, Arkansas, Missouri, LSU, and Ole Miss. And then on the SEC East, you have Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Vandy, Florida, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina, and Mississippi State. That would be a really fun division because you have Georgia and Alabama now in the same division, which means they will play each other two out of every three years, which would be really fun. And yeah, I, I really like how this turned out. Let's get into the next conference, the Big Ten. Next up, we have the Big Ten Conference. And again, same thing, 18 teams. Every one of these conferences are the same, so it all kind of makes sense. Same thing, six same division games, three games against the other division and three non-con games each season that means you get to see everybody at least once every three years it makes a lot of sense so in the sec or in the big 10 west excuse me we do have usc ucla washington and washington state added to the big 10 in nebraska minnesota wisconsin northwestern and iowa and then in the big 10 east we do have ohio state michigan michigan state penn state indiana purdue maryland Rutgers and Illinois. So the only change here is adding Washington and Washington State and then also splitting up the divisions even further. This is the one that was, I, I kind of like to keep things kind of geographical just because like that's how I like to watch my college football. Uh, I like to see teams that are near each other play each other and just makes for easier travel and stuff. But really the biggest gap in this entire realignment that I have created here is USC versus some of these teams in the East like Penn State or Rutgers and that's already happening in real life so there's not much I could do to change that USC and UCLA will be joining the Big Ten as soon as their contract ends with the Pac-12 here coming up I think in 2024 so let's move on to the new ACC all right let's get into the new ACC conference now this is where things get interesting and a lot of changes start to happen here so this is the new ACC, same thing, 18 teams, two divisions of nine, and same thing, same scheduling, all that good stuff. So in the ACC North, we do have Boston College, Syracuse, West Virginia, 
Pitt, you get the Backyard Brawl there, you get the rival between Cincinnati and Louisville, you get the rival between Virginia and Virginia Tech, and you get Virginia Tech versus West Virginia as well, and Notre Dame added into the ACC North there as well to get another big brand name to this new conference. Then in the ACC South, you get North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, NC State, all the North Carolina teams staying there in the same division. You get Clemson, Georgia Tech, Florida State, Miami, and Central Florida. So the big changes here are really, it's just the ACC added in three Big 12 teams in West Virginia, Cincinnati, and Central Florida, and also adding in Notre Dame. So I think that this could possibly be semi-realistic if they were able to do this, and if every conference can agree to do this, I feel like it could save the game of college basketball. I really, really do. So let's get into our fourth and final super conference, which is the Big 12 conference. 12 conference, same thing, 18 teams, two divisions of nine, uh, same scheduling, all that good stuff. So in the Big 12 West, we do have Oregon, Oregon State, Boise State, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, San Diego State, Cal, and Stanford. And this is really Big 12 West and East, but it's really Big 12, Pac-12 versus Big 12, Big 12. It, as you can see, there's a lot of Pac-12 teams in the West and a lot of Big 12 teams in the East. And a lot of what this realignment has to do is kind of a Big 12, Pac-12 merger with a few Big 12 teams that were on the East Coast going over to the ACC. And that's kind of the main gist to this realignment. And then a lot of the hang hanger teams kind of going to the big 12 or uh the big 10 just a couple to each of those conferences which i kind of feel like this could be good like i feel like every conference here i mean obviously the sec and the big 10 would still be way better than the other two conferences but this i feel like with all the hype around the realignment all the hardcore fans especially, but even the casual fans are going to want to watch this new conference, the new Big 12 conference and the new ACC conference, and it could save the game of college football for sure. So, like I said, same scheduling here in the West. We do have a lot of those Pac-12 teams. In the East, we do have a lot of the Big 12 teams, which include Kansas, Kansas State, Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech, Iowa State, Memphis, Colorado, and BYU. So I think that this is a lot of fun. You get the Utah BYU, both in the same conference there. You get three Texas teams still in Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech. You get Kansas versus Kansas State still. Uh, you get to add Memphis, which is a big market there. Uh, Memphis, I feel like they deserve to be a, a Super 4 team. Also, Boise State on the west side, you get them added, and also San Diego State. So those are the three teams that I added uh, to this. So along with the kind of a Big 12, Pac-12 merger, you also still have three new teams that are new to a Power 5 or a Super 4 conference and that is memphis san diego state and boise state which i think could be some big brands added there to big brands or big markets added to your conference like boise state is a pretty big brand honestly and san diego san diego and memphis both big markets i think that it could work out and you saw some really good brands like arizona uh, oregon especially you know stanford if they can get good again you know it's hard for them uh being such a small smart school uh in this transfer portal era um but stanford you know a good brand when they could be good you got Colorado with Deion Sanders there. You got BYU and Utah who are bit, have been pretty good. Kansas State's been pretty good. Baylor, TCU just made a national championship game. So this, in my opinion, is probably the weakest of the four conferences, but it still has a lot of really fun teams around it. And that is kind of why I, I wanted to keep Oregon in there with their other Pac-12 teams because I was thinking about adding Oregon to the Big Ten instead of Washington, but I... I felt like this conference needed some bigger brand names and they needed Oregon, so I kept them there uh, to kind of try to balance it out as much as possible. Now, before I show you guys the complete map just to, that shows you all the conferences together, I want to go over the new college football playoff rules and bowl game rules that I've come up with with this new conference realignment. 
All right, so how the college football playoff will work in with these new Super 4 conferences. So we're keeping the 12-team playoff, and we are having five auto bids and seven at-large bids. So the five auto bids will be the four conference champions from the Super 4 conferences and then the best group of five team in the country because I would love to see the best group of five team in the country make it to the college football playoff, see how they go up against the big dogs, give them a shot. And I feel like that that should draw revenue as well. People want to see a random team like Fresno State get into the playoffs, see how they do against these big dogs and see if they can pull off this big underdog run. And um, top four teams get a buy in the playoffs for the first round. So I feel like, you know, four teams get a buy in 12 team playoffs. That makes sense. So the conference champions don't necessarily get the buys though. So what that means is if say, Wisconsin wins the Big Ten West and they win the Big 12 or the Big Ten championship game. That does not necessarily mean that they will get a top four uh, seed and get a buy. That does mean that they will get an automatic bid to the college football playoff, but they will not be a top four team. The best four teams judged by the play college football playoff committee will get the buys. Uh, if that makes sense, I really hope it does. So, Next up, all games except for the Natty are on campus. So every college football playoff game will be played on a college campus. The higher seed being the home team, I want to see college football playoff atmospheres at home. I don't know why, you know, they would not be. You know, if you look at the NFL, any playoff system, um, if you look at the NFL, you know every game is played at home for the higher seed until you get to the Super Bowl. I feel like the same thing should happen with college football. The atmospheres would be so much fun, and I need to see that. So every game, even the semifinals, are played on campus until the national championship game. So my last little change, kind of a big change, uh, is that I feel like there are too many bowls. I feel like bowl games should mean more. So I feel like this is still kind of fair. I don't want to see six and six teams or even five and seven teams make a bowl game. Um, I want to, I want them to mean more. And as much as I want to see New Mexico State versus Ohio, both six and six teams on, on a random, you know, Wednesday in bowl season, just to watch it, I mean, it doesn't mean anything really. So I, I think you have to, you should at least be seven and five as your record to make a bowl game. Lessen the bowl games, make them mean more. I feel like it could save college football a little bit, kind of help it out, uh, you know, uh, help more of the casuals kind of be able to keep up with all of the games as well. Um, you know, hard, hardcore us hardcore fans, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're a hardcore fan as well. We're going to watch New Mexico State versus Ohio, you know, in the random bowl game, right? But not everybody is, and, and I feel like 7-5, and five, that's fair. There's still going to be a ton of bowls, but, but they mean a little bit more. So let's get into the map to finish it all off. So this is the Super 4 Conference map. So the yellow is the new Big 12. The blue is is the big 10 the red is the new acc and the orange is the sec and if you see teams like memphis here highlighted in yellow that is because they are part of the big 12 um same with tcu texas tech baylor all that good stuff iowa part of the big 10 there uh cal and san diego state part of the big 12 uh just you know you can see it and it's fun. I, I, I enjoyed making this map. I enjoyed making this scenario. Let me know, do you think that this is any type of realistic? I feel like if this situation, I feel like if this scenario did happen, it could save college football because I don't want to see two super conferences and then everybody else left out to die, especially because I feel like my team in the West Virginia Mountaineers um are are probably going to be one of the teams that left gets left out and, and that would suck man and, and what's going to happen to all these other great programs and football teams that you know what's going to happen to them you know i i don't want to see two super conferences and everybody else go crash and burn like even in the super four conferences the sec and the big 10 are obviously still the best conferences out there 
but I feel like it is still it, it could help college football a lot. So let me know what you guys think about this scenario. Let me know if you guys want to see other college football realignment videos. I can do college realignment news, rumors, uh, different scenarios like this one. Let me know down below in the comment section. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.